Slippery Rock NYC's animation podcast using After Effects and Flash. This is episode one. I am your host, Rob Powers. Thank you for joining me. In this tutorial, I will be explaining After Effects, but using the terms that you would use for Flash, because I know a lot of people that know Flash very, very well and haven't quite made the transition to After Effects, but it's very, very similar. There are a few differences. Um, Flash is a, a great tool for doing drawn animation which uh, After Effects is not, but After Effects has the different effects and just is a really powerful tool in taking those drawn files and really making them pop off the screen. Today I'm going to just show you the basics and navigate you through the different windows here. Let's start off with the project window. This is exactly the same type of window that you would have in Flash, but in Flash it's called your library. In this window, you would import all your elements, and if you deleted your elements out of this window, it would be no longer in the project, exactly as it would in the, the library of Flash. This is your stage window here. Let me show you. Okay, here we go. This is your stage window here. Uh, this is what the final video will look like, the size of the final video would look like. Um, all your animation would be done in here. Down here is your timeline. It's the same as in Flash. The major difference in After Effects versus Flash is that only one element can be on a layer, where in Flash you can put multiple keyframes, multiple elements on just one layer. In After Effects you only can have one element per layer. If you want to add more to one layer, you'd have to pre-compose that layer and add more inside that new composition, which is also known as a symbol in Flash. Right here I've created a composition 01. This is your main stage. I'm going to import our element and show you the basic workflow in After Effects. Let's go to File, Import, bring in this basketball. Take your basketball, you can either drag it onto the stage or you can drag it down to your timeline. I'm going to drag it down to the timeline here. Now After Effects and Flash handle keyframes differently. In Flash you can have multiple elements, multiple aspects of the element like rotation, position on a single keyframe. In After Effects it has the same attributes but they are split up into different keyframes. If you turn down this arrow and turn down the arrow for transform you can see there's anchor point, position, scale, rotation, and opacity. The keyframes for each of these elements are separate. If we click on the little stopwatch it will start setting keyframes for us. Currently these are linear keyframes. We want to change these to hold just for the moment. If we right click keyframe interpolation and change from linear to hold. As you can see there's no animation happening because it is held in that position. Now we're going to do some basic animation and just do a ball bouncing into frame here. This ball is a little bit too big so we want to scale this down let's say 25 percent and we're going to move it off screen so if you hit V that gives you your move tool and you can grab and move it off screen. Let's move 10, 20 frames, take our ball, have it come into frame, hit the floor, and let's move it. Let's move our marker 20 more frames and drag it off screen. You can see the keyframes that are being set here and right now they're set to hold so if we ran preview this you would just see it pop on and off screen. If you right click choose keyframe interpolation and change this to linear that will give you the tween in between the keyframes. As you can see the ball comes in and bounces off. Now the, the ball is not bouncing in a natural way so we want to use our Bezier tool to change the angle and swoop of these curves here. If you hit G which is our pen tool and roll over the keyframe you can see that the pen tool changes into a Bezier angle tool and since I had all three selected they all snap back to a straight angle. Now for a more natural bounce we want to click on just the one keyframe, the first one here, click and hold down and drag out and it'll give you the Bezier handle and give you a nice arc for the animation. We want to do the same for the last keyframe and that looks like a nice natural movement. Let's ramp preview this by hitting zero on your number pad
That feels about right. Maybe let's speed it up. So if we zoom in by using the plus and minus keys above your regular part of the keyboard, next to your delete key usually, you can zoom in, take these keyframes, highlight them, and just drag them. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's just do nine frames. And we'll do nine frames here and see how that speed feels. That feels a little bit better. Now the ball still feels pretty rigid. We want to probably add some squash and stretch on that ball so when it hits here, it'll squash and then bounce back up to neutral. Maybe also have the ball stretch while it's coming in and then hit and squash and then stretch going back out and that'll give it a little bit more of a poppy, bouncy feel to it. Let's start down here. We want to change the scale of the element. If you hit your V tool, that's the move tool, you can grab any of these handles and click and drag the ball to get the scale to change. Or you could t type in the difference here. If you don't want the scale to be even, click the chain here, unlink them, and set your value to what you would like. And then you can link them again. Let's go to the last keyframe. We could also do that by hitting the K key, which will jump you to their next keyframe, or if you hit the J key, it'll jump to your previous keyframe. So you can jump back and forth. It's a little bit quicker, especially if you have a long timeline with a lot of keyframes. So let's go to the end here, and let's copy and paste the previous keyframe to get us back to our neutral position. So if you hit Command C and then Command V, it will paste your keyframes. We also want this to be a linear move. Let's change this to keyframe interpolation, change this to linear, and this will give us the tween between the squash and the stretch. As you can see in the RAM preview, it still doesn't quite feel natural. Let's play around with the timing of the squash and stretch. Let's take this keyframe and copy and paste it here. Let's take the last keyframe, which is also the same value, and just paste it there. And also, let's give it a little bit more dynamic animation by squashing and stretching this when it comes in so it looks like it's coming in faster squashes and goes out fast as well let's take that keyframe and move that to the beginning we can even copy that keyframe and paste it here and let's ramp preview that and see how that looks we don't want the stretch to be vertical like it is here so let's add rotation to it so let's highlight the rotation and we can click and drag on the numbers here, or we can type in a number, say 60, maybe 50, and we'll have that stretch go along the path of the animation. It'll look, make it look a little bit more natural. Let's take that keyframe and drag it to the front there. Let's go to here and make the rotation zero. Let's go to the end and make the rotation negative 50. And let's turn these into linear keyframes. Keyframe interpolation. Linear. Okay. And ramp preview with the zero on the number pad and see how this looks. That's feeling better. Now, I don't want the 